Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel, which comes from the 15th chapter of the gospel according to John. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown in the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever wondered why you tilt your head in a particular way when you are upset? Have you ever wondered why you snort when you laugh too hard? Have you ever wondered why you have freckles or brown eyes or actually love pickles? There are certain things about us, the things that we do and how we do them and even our physical features that make up our identity. I would actually call them identity markers. Sometimes they may be simple. They may not seem like anything major, yet they are a part of us and most likely have been with us all our lives. My cousin Diane, who is also my best friend, has freckles. Growing up, she hated them. She would try to cover her cheeks because the freckles run all the way on her cheek line going up to the side of her hairline. She was embarrassed about freckles, and she's the only one of my uncle's children who has freckles. And not only does my cousin Diane has freckles, but when she's angry, her ears turn red. There she is, just a little bit lighter in skin tone than I am, but she has freckles and flaming red ears when she's angry. We didn't know what had caused her to have freckles or why her ears become red when she's angry. It's when we became older, her mom told us that her great-grandmother was Irish. Each of us has certain traits and certain habits and features that reflect who we are, but it also shows to whom we are connected. They are a part of our heritage, they are a part of our family connection, and they are reflective of our family history. I think you may have seen the ads on television or online over the past 10 to 15 years, there are certain companies that have been inviting people to trace their DNA, to trace their family lineage. Websites like 23andMe and Ancestry.com and the invitation is given where people can take just a piece of their hair, a strand of their hair, or a sample of their spit and send it off, and DNA testing will be done, and then they will tell you who you are related to, your third and fourth generation before you, all that kind of stuff. They have the commercial where one young man said he thought he was German and he had, he had um, his letter husband all the time dancing only to realize he was Scottish. 
A dear friend of mine called me a few weeks ago and he was telling me, we had known that he was adopted and his adopted parents had been very good to him, but he always wanted to know who his birth family is. And he told his adopted parents that he was going to do the search. And he did, and he started finding clues. He, the only thing he knew was that he had one brother. That's all he knew from the adoption records. And he said as he started doing the research, he started finding clues that kept on leading him further and further into more discovery. And eventually he reached out to somebody he thought could most likely be his brother because there were 23 mark matching chromosomes that would say that that's most likely a relative of his. And as he went further, he realized it could be his brother. He reached out to him by Facebook, and after the connection was made, the brother said, let me introduce you to mom. He said it was a telling time, and he rested on his adopted parents who have been nothing but kind and loving to him, but he always wanted to know what happened. And eventually, he got the chance to talk to his mom. He said what was so funny the profession he is in is the same profession his mother is in. The food that he loves is the same kind of food that his mother loves. When he saw his nephew and niece, he was quite surprised how when he pulled out the picture of when he was younger, that's exactly how he looked. The genes were strong in him. He saw the family connection. He saw the roots of his heritage. And he said to us, they are the fruit of my family bloodline. The things that I had done all the time, not knowing why I had been doing them, they are the fruit of my family bloodline. In our gospel reading this morning, we hear Jesus telling the disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the caretaker or the husbandman, depending on what translation you're reading. My father is the wine dresser. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you will bear fruit. Jesus says, I am the true vine. The vine is what supports the branches. The, the vine is what transfers the nutrients to the leaves. The vine is what keeps the branches healthy and strong and allow them to bear fruit. Jesus says, I am the true vine. For all of us here this morning, we have come from a lineage of families in the past, and it's them being the vine for us why we are here today. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, which is telling us that he is genuine, he is authentic. But there is something about the word, the true vine, the Greek word that is used here for true, which is aletheine. It also means truthful. What Jesus is saying that truthfully, I am telling you that I am the vine. If you stay in me, you will bear fruit. And the in me that Jesus is talking about is a one that is of relation. It's one of rest. If we rest in Christ, if we live our lives in Christ, if we are Christ-centered, if we are Christ-grounded, if we stay in Christ, if we are centered in him, then we will bear fruit. And the bear here that Jesus is talking about is to bring forth. It's, the Greek word is pharon, which actually means to bring forth for a public showing, to make known publicly. If you stay in me and I stay in you, you will bear fruit that will be known. You know how we say you know them by the fruit? That's what Jesus is basically saying to his disciples. You will be known by the fruit that you bear 
And if you stay in me, you will bear the fruit that brings glory to my Father. Now, if you get the chance when you go home this afternoon, I want you to go back through this text because I want you to see the number of times that Jesus says, remain in me. If you pay attention to the number of times he said the words, remain in me. Some translations have it as abide in me, as in dwell in me, stay in me. If you abide in me, if you remain in me, then truly you can bear fruit because I am the authentic vine and what I'm saying to you is true. Remain in me, abide in me, and you will bear fruit. If you don't remain in me, if you don't abide in me, if you don't stay in me, if I am at the center of your life, you will not have the power to do anything that is fruitful. You will not have the strength to do anything that will bring glory to God. You see, what we do as followers of Jesus Christ is a reflection of our relationship with him. What we do as Christ's followers is telling of how deep or how, or how shallow our relationship with Christ is. Our actions, our words are the fruit of our lives and they show to whom we are connected. And ever so often we get sidetracked by the ways of society. Ever so often we get sidetracked and we think we can bear fruit on our own. The fruit we bear are identity markers and they reflect to whom we are connected. Jesus calls us to bear fruit. Fruit of compassion, fruit of love, fruit of mercy, fruit of good works, fruit that will last. Have you ever seen a grapevine bearing mangoes? or a mango tree bearing cherries. Who we are connected to reflect the kind of fruit that we will bear. So this morning I ask each of us, what fruit are we bearing? In a time when people need to know that Christ indeed exists, Christ indeed is in the world and at work in the world, in a time when people need to know the love of God, to know that God loves them, it doesn't matter who they are, what they have done, where they are from, what family lineage they have or they're, they're connected to, are we bearing fruit that brings glory to God? Sadly, Jesus also says that any branch that does not bear fruit, my Father will cut some translation says he will lift it up and support it in a way that it will bear fruit. And for those that bear fruit, he will prune gently so it can bear more. When we are disconnected from the vine, we take on certain practices that do not reflect that we're Christ followers. When we do not stay in the word of God, we do certain things that do not reflect that we're children of the most high God. You see, it's one thing to do a physical DNA test. It's another thing to do a spiritual DNA test. And we all need ever so often to test our spiritual DNA to see if we are truly connected to the one who is the true vine. Because when we are truly connected, then our lives will reflect this connection by the fruit that we bear, the works that we do, the things that we say. You see, for those of us who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, we have to live in a particular way. We have to allow our actions and the things that we say to reflect that we are indeed followers of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Peter had an understanding of this, and so he wrote in 1 Peter chapter 2, he says, You are a chosen people, 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. We have been called to bear fruit, fruit of righteousness, fruit that will last. So this morning, I invite all of us to stay connected, remain in Christ, dwell in the Word of God, abide in Him, be grounded in Him, be centered in Him, and see what fruit He will bear in you and through you for the transformation of the world. Amen.